Thanks for tuning in to Retire Hour, the weekly show discussing income planning, investing, tax planning, estate planning, and Medicare. Complete retirement education. Hear from our financial advisors, CPA, estate planning attorney, and Medicare advisor every week. Welcome to Retire Hour. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Matt Goolsby. Thanks for tuning in to Retire Hour this week, the show that helps you avoid potentially costly mistakes in retirement. Wouldn't you want to know if something's going to cost you thousands of dollars or maybe have a detrimental impact on your family or a family member or maybe even your, your heirs? This is the show that we want to be out there as a resource for you to help you stay up to date on the ever-changing landscape that is retirement. Get the facts, get educated, Ask the questions. If you want to ask a question, go to our website, retirehour.com, and you can submit that question. We'll use it on air. Got a listener question later coming up in the show, but we want to make sure that we're helping you avoid catastrophe in retirement and how working with a team, whether it's tax team, estate planning team, Medicare team, and investment team, working together, collaborating to save you money or heartache in the future. So with that, I've got here in studio with me an advisor with Market Advisor Group Wichita, Larry Clefcorn. Coming from their offices there in Wichita, I've got another advisor with Market Advisor Group Wichita, Danny Goolsby. And then coming from Kansas City, I've got Jonathan McCoy, an advisor there up in his office in the Northland of Market Advisor Group Kansas City. And how not having a team under one roof can cost you dearly. I met with someone just this past week, Kent and his wife, they had an inheritance. Kent was part of a family that had three other siblings, so there was four children of his mother. He's still working and his wife's retired. His mother passed away and left this inheritance to these four children. It was all IRA money, and here's the tragedy. Kent is barely in the 22% tax bracket, okay? And this pushed him into the 24. His mother's financial advisor had told nothing to the siblings or Kent himself about tax strategies or tax things they should do to avoid these tax bombs in their estate plan, let alone their financial. And often it goes overlooked and you can't undo these things after they're done. So Danny, I'm going to go to you first here. Could they have done some tax planning around this inheritance before they just automatically had to pay all the taxes and push them into another tax bracket? Well, uh, yes. The short answer is yes. We could all be armchair quarterbacks or Monday morning quarterbacks uh, now, but the fact remains that there were missed opportunities galore uh, with, with the family that you're referring to. There was a famous guy named John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller, he was the founder of Standard Oil. He once said, why pay taxes on the money you don't need? And so here's one of the most wealthiest men on the planet that recognized how needless taxes can destroy the legacy of a family that took decades or maybe even generations to, to amass. As consumers, we get hung up on on we talk about investments and, and returns and what's the flavor of the month in those respects. But by making your retirement plans more tax efficient, meaning finding planning areas where a person would pay less in taxes, that automatically increases the yield or growth rate on your money. Yeah, Jonathan in Kansas City, you know, since the SECURE Act changed how you can inherit specifically qualified or IRAs or 401ks, those types of pots of money, the rules used to be where you could have taken this over you the rest of your life and stretched out the taxes, but now there's a 10-year window here, but they didn't even opt for that. They just took it all lump sum. In fact, Kent told me when I was meeting with him and his wife, the advisor didn't even tell him that was an option. So there's so many missed opportunities here, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. And, and unfortunately, that's we see people stumble into these situations all the time because most financial advisors are not licensed to give tax advice. We wonder, you know, why is this information not getting through to the client? And and potentially saving them thousands of dollars, not just in taxes, but also you have to think about the potentially the potential tax deferred gains that could have been there. You know, we've walked many people through how they can potentially be using some of these inherited IRA accounts to do things like Roth conversions over that 10 year time frame. And there's a lot of different strategies to be used there. And I'm not here to give anybody any specific recommendations if you're in that situation. But the bottom line is you've got to be exploring your alternatives, exploring your uh, various different solutions to some of these tax problems. And if you're working with an advisor that doesn't have that CPA available to sit there with you, walk you through those ramifications before you're making a decision on how you want to treat that money, you're going to miss the boat and it's, it will cost you money almost every time. 
That's a great point Jonathan makes there. Uh, Larry, you know, sadly, there's nothing that can be done at this point. I mean, Jonathan is mentioning that the advisor didn't have that they were working with or that Kent's mother was working with Kent because uh, Kent works with us. But there, there wasn't that conversation before something happened there. And oftentimes when it comes for taxes, you need to know how it's going to impact you before you do the transaction or before the event happens, not after the fact. And what I find is such a, maybe an unfortunate situation is most people don't find out this stuff until they go to file their taxes. And then it's, it's, it's really too late, right? It is. Um, you know, they need to do it during the tax year that is going to be affected. That's very important. And, you know, I recently met with Jim and Tammy and, and they were concerned and the, it was the first meeting with them and we were just getting to know each other. They were very concerned about tax planning. They were getting ready to step across into retirement and they'd been to one of our workshops and they were, they were like, man, I mean, the point was really made. We need to do some tax planning and we don't know where to start. So I was able to walk down the, the hallway and bring in Joshua or CPA and he was able to address a number of things for them to put them, to give them confidence that we were going to walk through this process together. So I encourage anyone who is meeting with any advisor, whether it be here or somewhere else, especially, bring those questions up and make sure that they are equipped in their office to handle those type of things and are not going to run you all around town. Yeah, and you know what I come across a lot is I'll hear someone say, well, my advisor always had someone that they could refer me to, but I'd call them and then I didn't really trust myself to relay that information enough there or the fact that maybe I left some things out or I didn't, just didn't, I didn't feel confident going to that CPA myself without my advisor and there's such a disconnect there and that's right. what we, we've seen happen too often prior to building our firms together like we have and knowing that when we're working together as a team, there's things we can collaborate on to make sure that it doesn't cost the people we're helping dearly and too much money. And then they find out after the fact it's too late. So if you want to work with a team or just have a conversation with us on how it might be beneficial to work with a team, feel free to reach out to us at 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687. Or you can email us, ask, ASK, at retirehour.com. Or go to our website, retirehour.com. You can actually set up a consultation right there on the website. No cost to you guys. We want to get our team together to have a conversation with you to see what could be costing you or potentially costing you in your future retirement plan. We'll stay tuned because we'll be right back with more right after this break. Welcome back to Retire Hour. Well, with potential more legislation on its way, how could that cost you in your future retirement? Think about that. Most of us have saved for a retirement as Americans in accounts that have never had the taxes paid on them. Those IRAs, those 401ks. Do you think taxes are going to be cheaper today than they are in the future? If that's the case, if you really think taxes are going up in the future, what are you doing about it? What is your current advisor doing about it? What is your tax advisor doing about it? Do you have a tax advisor? Are there things you can be doing? Well, the answer is probably yes, but how will you know without having a conversation with a team that can help you with that? And so here, I'm going to go to Jonathan McCoy up in Kansas City. So do, Jonathan, do you think current advisors are making recommendations in preparation for this maybe changing regulation environment or maybe even increase in taxes in the future? Now, from my experience and the feedback I'm getting from the folks that come uh, into consultations to meet with us, the answer to that is clearly no. Um, you know, company wide, we look at we meet at somewhere between a thousand to twelve hundred households a year, and each one of these individuals and couples is coming to us through a lot of these educational events that we do. So, the clear the clear feedback that I'm getting is, hey, you're bringing up things in this class, in this workshop, a public event, or even on you know retire hour and other uh, other avenues that we use to try to get our message out that taxes are becoming a more and more important thing. And a lot of people, I mean, we have to realize that this is the first generation that has worked their entire career with these tax deferred accounts. 
So really, they're the first people to get to go through this experiment of whether or not this truly is a tax benefit for you in your retirement that was not available to previous generations. And we're consistently hearing that, hey, I'm getting I'm bringing these tax questions to my advisor and they're referring me to other CPAs. You brought it up in the last uh, last segment, Matt, that ultimately people are ending up in sort of this ping ponging between professionals and not getting any clear sense of direction, not really getting any of the, the advice that they think they should be paying for that they already are paying for but they're just not getting the advice, not getting the information. And it has to do a lot with what a professional or what an advisor is allowed to talk about. And if they don't have that CPA available, um, they're not going to be able to give you any good sense of direction, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a great point, Jonathan. So Danny, Jonathan mentions there, they're paying for that advice from that financial advisor, right? I mean, so they should be getting all this advice. If not, what are they paying for? Well, the short of it is, is they're, play, they're paying for incomplete advice is what they're paying for. I mean, most advisors that, are, that don't have the, the, uh, the, requ- the education behind them for tax advice or legal advice in the settings of estate planning, um, they're, they're just a one-trick pony, if you will. They're, they're maybe showing you the best, next best investment plan uh, or the next best investment holding to have, but that doesn't mean in the overall plan that's the best thing for them. How it, they don't have the ability to find out where the, where are the tax loopholes that we we need to be avoiding in this income plan that we just created for you. So all of that said is the short of it is is people who are not working with a holistic team, then the consumer in those instances are paying for incomplete advice. Yeah, and unfortunately, we find that too many people out there really are with a financial advisor paying them somehow, compensating that advisor because no one typically works for free, but they're paying them for that financial advice. But really, it's it's not complete because, like I mentioned, the IRAs, 401ks, if you've not paid the taxes on that money, when you take a withdrawal or when you're forced to take a withdrawal at a certain age with your RMDs, that's going to be a taxable implication. And so I met with someone, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, they said, well, my financial advisor, they, they normally can get it close enough. And when it comes time for taxes and, and investment planning, I, I don't think close enough is right. good enough, Larry. Right. Do you mean, when, when I, is it too late to tax plan? Well, it's too late when the year's over. Okay, yeah. that for sure. But also there's the, the thing I like to prepare people for. I said, try to have it done by November. Do it at least within November so that you have time to maneuver And our tax professionals have time to help you as well. Um, Oftentimes, oftentimes we see people who come in with fear written all over them. And one of the best joys I get from having those meetings with people is to see them physically relax as we go through the process and our CPA uh, starts to build confidence. Yeah. And, you know, there, there are multiple times for multiple, I guess, tax plannings for long term. It's never too late to ta- tax plan for long term because if you look at what your RMDs are going to maybe do to you when you turn the RMD age, whether you've already turned that age or, or if it's approaching or if it's so far off in the future, either way. Mm-hmm. But then right now with the time of year we're in towards this end of the year, this is the best time to work with a financial professional and a tax team to look at Roth conversions, right? Yes, it is. Uh, and, you know, it allows uh, Joshua or CPA to get to collect vital information to help walk them through the scenario. So when he walks into a meeting in which he was supplied all the proper information, he's already got it ready. And all he has to do is just supplement with questions that he has and the answers they give him. Yeah, I, I uh, met with a new couple about, oh, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, because we took last week off, or I, I took last week off. <laughs> but um, I met with a couple, um, you know, they said, you know, our, our previous financial advisor had never asked to see our tax return. And I said, that's interesting. Um, you know, well, wasn't surprised because he couldn't give tax advice. Yeah, there you go. And working with this team that we've got here with Market Tax Services with, you know, they're up to about 18 people now. I mean, they're a great resource to have. We talk about Joshua all the time because he's on the radio and TV with us. Mm-hmm. But um, just the whole team approach to look at that when we start helping them with their taxes, well, market tax services helps them with their taxes and then we help them with the investment side. And working together, you start to recognize opportunities as the team where if the tax professionals out there by themselves, they might not be able to recognize that opportunity or maybe if they do, they don't communicate it to their financial advisor. And it's just, it's it's unfortunate because 
uh, as these tax laws will be changing and I feel like they'll probably be getting more complicated and taxes will be going up to pay for all these giveaways, it's going to cost people dearly in the future and they might not even might not even be on their radar. Right. And, you know, you mentioned, you make a good point there that we talk about Joshua a lot because he's on these segments and, and different things and he's our lead CPA here in Wichita. But I think I should mention that Pat up in Kansas City is the lead CPA up there and works hand in hand with Jonathan. So they're all in the same room. Yeah, and they're and they work together just like we do. Uh, and as far as that team approach and Roth conversions are something everyone I think should at least take a look at. And if you're not having an, a conversation with someone about that, you need to do it before the end of the year. Most people meet with their tax professionals in February, March, and April of the following year, and then you can only do a Roth conversion in whatever what other calendar year you're in. So you need to do the steps today and call and reach out at 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687, or go to our website, retirehour.com. You can book a consultation right there, but at least have a conversation with someone. Is a Roth conversion right for you? And if so, how much? Because you want to know what it's going to cost you before you do it, but time's running out to do it towards the end of the year here, and that is the most optimal time to do it when you've had most of the year now to look at what your income has been, Did you have any unexpected income incidents like an an inheritance or a buyout or any of those options? Make sure you have that conversation before it's too late. Well, coming up next, we'll do our weekly segment of Find the Fees, and we thought we should talk about how inflation is a hidden fee. So stay tuned for more. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. Thanks for tuning in this week. In this week's segment of Find the Fees, with all this extra spending that's coming out of Washington, and as I'm sure you guys have noticed, things getting more expensive, whether it's at the gas pump or at the grocery store, we thought we should talk about how inflation is a hidden fee. It's time to find the fees. So like I mentioned with the gas pump, I've seen gas continue to keep creeping up. And when I was in Kansas City over this past weekend up there visiting Jonathan in our offices there, you know, we were, I was noticing Jonathan now at one of the gas stations, um, gosh, gas was almost $3.50 for premium. I wouldn't be surprised if we could see $4 a gallon of gas here in the Midwest by the end of the year, let alone there, there's been some experts saying that oil's looking at almost $100 a barrel. So Jonathan, retirees on a pension without a cost of living increase, inflation can have a big influence in a negative way, can it not? Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, I mean, we we feel so secure in our pensions, right? But think about if inflation even clicks away at two or 3% per year, think about the compound negative impact over the first 10 to 15 years of your retirement, let alone if you're alive for 25 to 30 years in your retirement. So this year is just one of those more acute exposures that we've seen, obviously, to six, seven, eight, upwards of 10% inflation, depending on what products and services you're talking about. So if you're not planning for that inflation, or if you're working with an advisor and asking them, you know, how are we dealing with this inflation? And your advisor gives you an answer that makes you feel like, well, essentially there was no plan for an unexpectedly high year or, or, or period of years of inflation. Then once again, the question that we commonly ask is, what are you paying for? What is the planning that's actually going into place there if you're not prepared ahead of time? And if you've gone into retirement with a major fixed income resource like a pension that does not have a cost of living adjustment, you should be taking steps up front before you make the decisions around how you're going to be living on that pension to make sure that you've got something else that can kick in when those expenses come in unexpectedly high. Yeah, Jonathan has a good point there. Danny, so how do people get impacted there that are living on a fixed income, how does that impact them if they, uh, you know, they're hearing the president and Congress might say that, well, this thing's going to be paid for. It's not going to cost you anything. But if they're on this fixed income, it's eroding their purchasing power, is it not? It it most definitely is. And, um, you know, inflation could be thought of as its own tax that hits the ones that are on a fixed income, like we're describing here today, the hardest. Um, It means the people who's... whose income is already determined by Social Security and or maybe a pension, they suddenly find that the cost of goods and services are costing way more or they're rising way faster 
uh, faster than if they are lucky enough to have a COLA on their pension or the Social Security COLA. Uh, things are rising way faster than that. You know, Social Security, uh, they announced in October, so last month they announced what the cost of living adjustment would be for 2022, and they named they, uh, they said that that was going to be a 5.9% rate increase. Well, that's the highest it's been since 1980. Our Fed chair has been saying, you know, this, well, let me back up for just a moment. The CPI number, or the, what inflation's running at, that was just released earlier this week. And what that's telling us is that inflation is raging, and it's probably here to stay a long while. So it's got a lot of people who are on, on these fixed-type incomes. It's got them really scrambling on what to do. What can I give up in my budget now? Because things are getting more and more expensive. Yeah, and, and in the long term, that's not going to be good for the economy. Uh, getting right to the end of the uh, the scenario there. Larry, you know, people think precious metals are hedges against inflation, but that's not always the case, right? I mean, I've heard you talk about this many times. Right. It's not the case. And if they ever want to see precious metals and how they do react in any type of scenario, come, come in, make an appointment and let me show you. Any one of our advisors can show you that the empirical evidence is obvious that is not necessarily a safe haven. It's not necessarily there as a way to defeat inflation. Um, so don't let all the commercials on TV misguide you. They're there to sell something. Yeah, and the, there's commissions in, involved when they buy those precious metals. Sometimes there's storage fees if they use them in their IRAs. I met with a gentleman. He was blown away that he bought some over the past year, and he, he's actually lost money even though maybe the price has come up. But in storage fees, commissions, it's just eroded everything. So if you want to have a conversation with this team to find out how inflation could impact you in a very negative way in retirement or what you can do to maybe potentially offset that or prepare for that, feel free to reach out to us at 888 Four six eight seven, or go to our website retirehour.com as well. Set up a no cost consultation, you guys. We'd love to have a conversation with you with our team, our tax team, estate planning team, Medicare team, and investment advisory team. We'll stay tuned because after the break, we'll be right back with our estate planning, Medicare, and tax segment with all those professionals. You won't want to miss what's coming up. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. Thanks for tuning into the show that helps you potentially avoid costly mistakes in retirement, whether that be with your investments, your income plan, taxes, estate planning, or Medicare. And here in this Medicare segment, we've got our lead Medicare advisor with Market Medicare Advisors. And Bill Vodder here is with me in studio. And during this open enrollment time, there's something that they can switch to, and it's a certain kind of they can change what kind of Medicare they're on, right? Yes, they can. Today, there are two different versions of Medicare to, to work with or to pick from, and, and it's a choice people need to make. And that other version, they actually call Medicare Advantage, right? They do. It, when it came out, it was called Medicare Advantage, and uh, I know you might question, well, what's advantageous about it, I guess? Yeah, is that just some slick marketing term that they came out with there as far as calling it advantage or is there really an advantage to medicare advantage well initially when i had to go through all of the training on it years ago <laughs> i yeah i kind of thought it was just a slick marketing ploy but over the years they have definitely made some key improvements to that program that really do make it advantageous for some people and i always tell people there's no right or wrong here with which way you go. For some people, the traditional version of, of Medicare is the better route to go. And for others, it's the, the newer version, Medicare Advantage. Now, you help people with both. Let's just be clear about that. And there certainly are times where traditional Medicare with a Medicare supplement is more beneficial. Or sometimes people think that the Advantage plans are more beneficial. But what are some extra things that you get or what is the advantage that you get with Medicare Advantage if you're someone on Medicare Advantage? Um, that's a really good question. I always, when I go through this with people, I walk them through the traditional version first and explain if you stay there, the choices you would want to make going down that path. And then I shift gears and talk about the newer version of Medicare. And as I finish up talking about that, 
I start talking about what I refer to as the ancillary benefits there. In most Medicare Advantage plans, you pick up dental insurance, or at least some dental, if not quite a bit of dental, vision insurance and and allowance for eyeglasses and contacts, um, dental vision and hearing. Some of them pay for, help not pay for all of it, but they help to pay for hearing aids and a gym membership. And sometimes there's an over-the-counter allowance for miscellaneous health-related items. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about the -the over-the-counter allowance. Some of those, some of those people that are on it, they actually get like Visa gift cards that they can go use for things to go out there that they buy normally for their medication stuff. Yeah, I had a guy in yesterday because when, when I have people come in for these reviews, sometimes they're not they're happy with what they have. They just want to know if there's been any updates or any changes. And, and I always make a point of making sure that if they're on a Medicare Advantage plan, um, making sure that they are using all of the benefits that are in, that are in that plan because a lot of people – they forget about them. Like this, what you're talking about, this over-the-counter benefit. Um, some companies give you 50 or $60 a month to order toothbrushes, toothpaste, vitamins, bathroom scales, whatever with health-related items. A lot of things can get covered under that. I mean, they can even, my mom used, uh, she's on a Medicare Advantage plan. She used uh, one of those cards to actually pay for some of her prescriptions. They, it worked at the pharmacy to actually pay for um, a, a shot she was getting for migraines. Yeah, so this guy yesterday afternoon, I'm you know I'm trying to make sure he's aware of everything that's on his plan, and he brings this up. He says, "Do you know?" He says, "I get paid ten dollars a month if I if I get in seventy five hundred steps. I forget what <laughs> how often he has to do that, but he's got to do that so many days a week over a period of time, and then they put ten dollars on this card, this Visa card they give you." Yeah, and it's all those extra benefits that don't typically come with a traditional Medicare plan with the Medicare supplement. And there's a lot of, um, you know, I find as human beings, um, we're often afraid of the unknown and we often don't like change. There are, I find when we do these educational classes that you guys will go do, you and Corey on these Medicare workshops, there are people that are just adamantly against Medicare Advantage. And I'm like, okay, we're not here to sell you one way or the other. You do a great job of walking everyone through their individual circumstances and figure out which way is right for them. But these, these Medicare Advantage plans, there's no bias from you guys on that. No, no. When I get done explaining it, there's a lot of people will look at that and say, well, why wouldn't I do a Medicare Advantage plan? And I, and I shrug my shoulders and I say, I don't know. Why wouldn't you? I said, but there are pros and cons. And then I start walking them through the pros and cons both ways. And um, because there are benefits of either way, and it's a matter of, well, which one of these has more benefits that benefits you personally? And Medicare Advantage works in a way where there's like a maximum out-of-pocket cost, right? That's true. And so- where traditional Medicare does not. Traditional Medicare is open-ended. Uh, if you do not carry a Medicare supplement, your financial exposure is unlimited in traditional Medicare. Now, they've done away with them, or I say they've done away with them. There, there are certain now... Um, people that are of an age that are grandfathered, they can still get those Medicare supplement plans where they don't still pay anything. There's an all, all covered plan, right? But that plan has gone away. If- well, at plan F, their Medicare supplements are lettered and a, a plan F covers all the deductibles, all the co-payments and, and can cover what's referred to as excess charges. Uh, but really people, I'd like to say properly educated people stopped buying plan F a long time ago. Um, they move started moving to what's known as a plan G, or the the next letter. Well, so they're uh, those people that buy those plans. Maybe they're on a fixed income budget, like we talked about with the previous segment. Uh, maybe they they don't have much room for any extra expenses, so that that helps them budget that monthly expense. True. You know, I have people that that look at traditional Medicare, and they they know that if they can budget whatever that Medicare supplement premium is then they know that they don't care what their medical bills go to. They know if they have a plan G, they've got a $200 deductible once a year. And after that, if the doctor says, I want to run another test, you say, I don't care. It's not, you know, I I budgeted for that. It's not going to cost me anything. But that's kind of how they're getting to this Medicare Advantage plan. They want some skin in the game, so to speak, from the people that are using the medical system to make sure that they're not just running a bunch of tests or things that they don't need. That is true, and it's not just that the people are running the test, it's the doctors as well. They 
they want to run test is the the C C Y A thing, you know. <laughs> um, Cover your yeah. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, <laughs> That that's true. So in Medicare Advantage, uh, that is more of a controlled or not. It's not controlled. What's the term I'm looking for? They're managed healthcare system. So the doctors can't just run buku wild and running whatever tests they want to run. They have to have a, a reason for doing it, and that helps keep costs down, which is the whole uh, objective there. Because there's a lot of fraud, like you've said, in the traditional Medicare system. Oh, a tremendous amount of fraud going on. Yes. So during this open enrollment time, if people want to switch from traditional Medicare to Medicare Advantage, they can do that to get these extra benefits and maybe even but these it, prescription. Yes, these but it has to be done during this time before December the 7th. Before December the 7th. So if you want to have a conversation and see if it might be beneficial for you to make this change, feel free to reach out to us at 833-888-HOUR. That's 833-888-4687. Or go to our website, retirehour.com. Bill and Corey's times are filling up like crazy right now, but there's still time for you guys to get in and do a, a cost benefit analysis on your situation. Get your prescriptions that you have, get a list of the doctors that you go to so they can walk through if you could save money or maybe even get benefits that you're missing out on. We'll stay tuned because we'll be right back after this break with our estate planning attorney, Gerald Eidelman, with some good estate planning question here submitted from a listener here and some good tips that you need to pay attention to. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. In this segment for our estate planning segment this week, we have a listener question, but here's the thing. Whoever submitted this question, you guys didn't provide your information, and that's okay. We, we, we'll keep your identity um, private on, on the air, and we won't use that. But had you just given us your mailing address, we'd love to send you out one of these Retire Hour coffee mugs that we have, and we enjoy treating you guys as a thank you to submitting these questions because we want to talk about the things that you guys have concerns with out there and that might be questions that are in the back of your mind on what you need to get educated on, or maybe even your scenario that we can educate others on so that they don't get impacted in a negative way or in a surprised way. And it costs them dearly. And so this listener question goes, if I die prematurely, how can I make sure my heirs have a single point of contact and a concrete plan in place? Gerald, I mean, what would you say to that? Well, what I would say, obviously, would be work with us. We have a single uh, point of contact with financial advisors, uh, tax advisors, legal advisors. We all work together, even though we are independent from each other. And if you have everything under one roof, it will be a lot simpler for your heirs to be able to locate the information they need to to take care of your estate. And and that's why I'm so bummed that this this individual, I said about said guy, I don't know if it's a guy or girl. I'm so bummed this individual didn't submit their information so I could mail them a coffee mug. Because that's like a shameless plug for, that's right. for working with that's us. Right. But, I mean, <laughs> but it's the truth. I mean, the problem is that most people, when they run into it, you know, you, somebody passes away, whoever, the, the children wind up rummaging through everything, trying to figure out, well, what the dad had, what the mom had, where is it? How do I get to it? And so having a single point of contact where you can find all that information is very rare. It is because I can't count how many times I've heard over my career in this industry, going back to 2004 about how people said when their parents pass away, they were still finding mom and dad's accounts from years ago. Yeah. That, that's a big problem because uh, you know, the longer you live, the more finances and financial instruments you wind up having. And, you know, some people have several the different banking accounts at different institutions. And if the kids have no records of it, no way to find it, uh, they'll have to do some creative uh, investigation to be able to find these assets. And that's not normally what someone wants to do when they've just lost their mom and dad or maybe no. their family member. They, they need that single point of contact. Uh, this great question here that they need that single point of contact and a concrete plan in place. Because most people, like you and I were talking at the break, most people don't think about estate planning until there's an emergency or sometimes it's even too late. Too late, yeah. I mean, we have had that experience, unfortunately, several times 
Uh, you know, I, I always talk about the problem with powers of attorney and the one client that I couldn't help. Uh, and, you know, the husband came down with cancer. She needed to be able to sign some documents for him. The pension buyout. The yeah. pension buyout. And it, it, the pension buyout was worth 300000 dollars. He declined health-wise very quickly, and he wasn't able to sign the documents. And as a result of that, the widow, instead of getting three hundred thousand plus dollars, she wound up getting fifty thousand dollars. Or even the gal, um, which you and Jonathan were working with in Kansas City. That's right. You, we, you, Jenna called to confirm the appointment for for you meeting with him to to sign to execute the estate plan, and you heard back from the daughter. My mother passed away last week. That's right. And this is a person who we had seen several months earlier, and they took their sweet time in bringing back the information so we can start the actual planning. And, of course, by the time that she was supposed to come, it was too late. And then, I'm going to say two weeks ago, someone called here and said, I'm getting admitted into the hospital with COVID. I need a medical durable power oh, of attorney. Yeah. If you can just text or email that to me, that would be great. And it's like... That doesn't work that way. No, it does not. It does not. Uh, and I, I, I mean, I can't do it that way. Uh, you know, most of part of it is that it power of attorney has to be signed and witnessed. And, and, and witness, and, and I mean, not notarized. Yeah. And so you might be able to do that at a hospital, but you know, me sending you something like that without having any control over it, it just wouldn't be good practice on my part. And they did for a while. They did in Kansas waive the in person thing. They would do let you to do notaries over Zoom, but that was a very limited. That thing. was a limited order during COVID. Uh, that is no longer in place. Uh, where you could do remote uh, notarization uh, again, that's no longer an, uh, available to us. So, any tips for for this listener here? Uh, I know you have prepared some some tips here to just kind of go over in about the minute we've got left here. Right. Well, one of the things I tell people is, first of all, if you have children or whoever you're going to appoint to do the work, you know, the executor, the power of attorney, communicate with them, provide them copies of the documents ahead of time so that they can find it. Uh, there's, a, there's a service that I'm currently looking into and integrating into my law firm. Uh, it's called Legal Vault, and that allows to store all of the... Documents in documents the cloud. Documents in the cloud. Even better, you can give your medical provider, in the case of an accident, you have a card, they can access your powers of attorney for health, your living will, and that is all in one little, neat little package, and that can be very useful to some of our clients. Now, you know what? I got to mention this. I have told all of our advisors that we work with that you're working on this and to not tell the people we're working with. And then you just told all of our listeners, our <laughs> 1,200 a month podcast subscribers, our YouTube videos, our Cox <laughs> Cable Vision, <laughs> all the 18 different radio stations. Run. You just told everyone. You just, you just took my thunder because I've been telling the advisors this is coming, but don't tell the people we're working with. And then you just announced it all over <laughs> all the air there. <laughs> well, oops. <laughs> Well, if you guys want to work with a team that can be that single point of contact, or if you want to have a review to make sure that you're going to have a plan for when that emergency arises, feel free to reach out to us at 833-888-HOUR, or that's 833-888-4687. And don't wait until the emergency happens to think about your estate plan. And if you already have one, have it reviewed by our team. Make sure that it's up to date. And then it actually does what you think it does. Because when the tragedy hits or the emergency happens, it's going to be too late. And you need to know, you need to have the peace of mind. Your family needs to have the peace of mind that those documents are in order. Well, stay tuned because we'll be right back after this break with our lead CPA of Market Tax Services, Joshua Sikora. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Retire Hour. I'm Matt Goolsby. In this last segment of the show, it's I feel like always the most important is tax planning. And we talked about how in the first segment, how I worked with a couple that works with us. Someone inherited some money from their mother's estate and the financial advisor they were working with didn't have a tax team in-house to help that beneficiary that was receiving those accounts tax plan around that. And we talked about how Joshua, the Secure Act changed how people inherit things, but they're still... 
I know I'm going to say that doesn't it doesn't change a lot as far as it doesn't eliminate all the options. Put it that way. There's still opportunities to tax plan there. And someone you and I talked with last week, um, her name was April. She had an inheritance from her mom and there was some challenges there as far as uh, they were talking about already doing their taxes with you next year. There were some challenges on this K one that was floating out there, right? Right. Right. And um, they didn't really know what a K one was. There was lots of, uh, they were just kind of feeling their way through this. And that, and that's what often happens when you're working with, you know, solo advisors who are just advising about their one piece of the the pie, so to speak. Um, but so she had this K one, she didn't really know what it was or why it, or she knew why it was, it was coming from an inheritance, but she didn't really know what it was doing to her taxes other than she needed it. And, um, you know, there's a lot of mystery. It seems that when people, when, in, when they inherit money about how it's going to be taxed, if it's going to be taxed, Oh, estate taxes exemptions are so high. There's nothing to worry about. That's just on the state taxes. State tax is an asset tax, right? It, it happens once, you know, it happens when someone passes and then, you know, year or two is done and then that's it. But what is a lingering issue is the income taxes on that inheritance. And people don't really understand what money gets taxed, what doesn't, why it gets taxed. And uh, different buckets of money that people can inherit get taxed differently. It may not even be money, right? It can be real estate. It can be, you know, marketable securities and they all get taxed different. And that's why it's important to work with somebody who can help you manage those assets you're inheriting, plus dealing with the tax implication at the same time. Well, in April and her husband, they've just n- n- newly started working with us. And mm-hmm. this actually came up when you and I were meeting with them talking about Roth conversions. That's right. And she'd mentioned how she didn't think inheritances were supposed to be taxable. And you mentioned how the estate tax is a different tax than income tax or mm-hmm. capital gains tax or any of those other taxes. But the estate tax exemption is so high. They've talked about bringing it down to help pay for this new uh, spending bill that they're trying to get passed here now um, since they've got infrastructure passed. But inheritances are just like any other thing. Um, you always talk about how the tax genie is very hard to put back in the bottle. Mm-hmm. You need to know things before you do these transactions, because after you do them, you ultimately can't do a lot to unwind them. That's right. What's done is done. And whether that means it's something that you're in- initiating now or whether whoever, you know, whoever you're inheriting it from making sure that they have their plans established appropriately. You know, we have another client we've worked with who was constantly assured that, you know, everything was taken care of, everything was taken care of. And they come to find out it wasn't taken care of right. And she inherited a lot of cash and she inherited a large tax bill. Yeah. And that, and I was just getting ready to mention Karen, um, Karen had a lot going on. She had things that were named to her specifically. Mm -hmm. There were things that were going through the trust. Yep. There were things that was supposed to be happening with the trust, not with us. That was someone back East that was, that was working with that. I want to give that distinction. And we told Karen, you know, we could, we could help you with this. And she goes, I think my aunt had it all taken care of. Mm -hmm. And turns out it was further, it was the furthest thing from the truth because uh, there were still things we could do for Karen. I mean, we structured some things over five years, so it didn't push her into a 32% tax bracket if memory serves me right. But again, most people meet with their tax professionals when it's time to prepare the taxes. And that is the exact time that it's too late to do something Mm -hmm. about it. That's an okay time to meet with your tax preparer but you should be meeting with your tax advisor with your other advisors, you know, during the course of the year. Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a good distinction there because if the tax advisor is not working with the financial advisor or the estate planning advisor or altogether, there's going to be a disconnect and it's going to cost someone dearly, maybe money, maybe their inheritance, maybe pushing them into a higher tax bracket. Really there's, I don't want to say it's endless, but it, in some ways it's endless on what it could cost them. Right. Right. And don't forget about the time and headache of, Whoever is receiving this this um, blessing, if you will, they have to spend unwinding it, figuring out what's going on, dealing with the consequences. When really all that person is intending is for something to pass on to this next generation that's going to help them out. And the unfortunate thing that we talked about in the first segment of the show this week was uh, how that couple that inherited that money just pushed all that IRA money out, and they could have structured that over 10 years to stretch the taxes out. And we we help people do that all the time. And if you guys want to have a conversation with how that can maybe be a team you could work with, call us at 833-888-HOUR. That's 833-888-4687. Or go to our website, retirehour.com. 
check out past episodes, subscribe to one of the podcasts, or submit your question or book a consultation. We'd love to meet with you and have it totally be complimentary there. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's episode of Retire Hour. Like I mentioned, go check out retirehour.com for uh, past episodes or subscribe to our podcast there or YouTube channel. And if you're in the KWCH viewing area, check out our new show, Eye on Retirement, hosted by Rick Everett. We have different advisors on there every week on Saturday nights at 630. And we talk about different scenarios that cost people money in retirement. Well, we'll see you next week on Retire Hour. and opinions expressed in this program do not represent financial, medical, tax, or legal advice. Please consult with a competent professional to provide advice tailored to your needs and circumstances. Investment advisory services are offered through Foundations Investment Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. 